Toby. Yes. Welcome back to Revert TV. Thank you. Thank you. So good to be back here. Nice to have you. Thank you. So your music video is out now, right? Yes, yes, it's out. It's out. It's out. And I'm really excited about it because the the project went well and I'm excited about the the reports I'm getting from people across the world. It's it's really encouraging. What what do you like about the video? Especially. I like the concept of the video. What's the concept? I like the quality. So let's let's talk about let's the, start concept. the concept. Now yeah. The song is actually a song that talks about how great God is okay. and about hope, you know, in hopelessness. Gotcha. So the video actually was a very short storyline, you know, about a guy that was kind of hopeless. He had a lot of stuff going on with him at a particular time in life and it was just walking on the road and it was almost run down by two mature couples, like elderly couples, mm -hmm. you understand? And from there, God just spoke to them and led them to, you know, give contact to him. And from there, that was how his life changed because the, the transformation came through the contact he had, yeah. you know, at that point in his life. And that was how his life changed and things just got better for him, you know. So it's just about a, a hopeless situation, you know, while God steps into it, it becomes a lot of success. Yes. You know, that was the storyline of it. And I've been hearing a lot of reports from people a lot of feedback it's been great it's been great nice it's video great. Who, who, whose idea was that was that the it director was idea or and the director because we sat down and we thought about it together okay so we, we were able to come up with that concept you okay. know and it was it was really beautiful yeah yeah uh, very very nice video you're yeah, right <laughs> thank it. you um so the feedback from people what 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 do you yeah, think a lot of people are saying that they're blessed with the song, that the video quality is perfect, they love the concept of the video, and it's something that they would love to see more of that kind of co you know quality and standard. Okay. Yeah, that's what that's what okay. they've been saying. What, what how do you think the video has impacted the music in terms of do you think people are downloading your music more? Okay. Since the video was released? Definitely, definitely. You know, what, do you think what, it's what, affecting what it's, what it's been able to do is to put the music out there more because most people know the song, but they haven't put a face to it. Okay. So what the music video does is it puts a face to a song that people already love. Mm -hmm. So that already, that again, you know, reignites the passion and love for the song. So they just go after it, download the video, download the songs on iTunes and on every platform it is. And it's really, really helped a lot because Thank the feedback you. has been, it's been great. So you, you, what can you, how can you advise like up and coming artists uh, in terms of, their music should they always have a video for every song or just be selective I, I, What's your... I wouldn't say for every song okay. I don't have a lot of videos for my songs too, okay. but any song you feel that has a, um, the prospect to be a major song or from when you're doing the sampling of the song from the audio because you need to do a sampling for mm. people to give you ideas of what they feel about this song what, what do you mean by sampling talk about like, that for like, those that okay, don't understand okay, that for those who don't understand it now when you produce a song mm -hmm. Some call it um, a listening party. Okay. Some call it a, a free hearing. You okay. know, it depends on what you want to call it. Okay. Or may I call it like a sampling session? Okay. So people come and listen to the song. Okay. And give you feedbacks of what they feel. Mm -hmm. You understand? You want to hear the critics. You want to hear the the encouragement. You want to hear everything. So from that point, you know, a song that is actually liable to be a very great song. Mm -hmm. Then those are the kind of songs you should shoot videos for. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And another thing the video does is. It puts the artist out there in people's hearts and their minds. Mm. When they hear your song, they could love the song. But when they see you, you know, when they have a visual of the song, it puts your face in their heart. At the same time, it makes them want to actually hear more from you. Mm. That's what it does. Mm. So I would advise every artist, no matter how big you are, you need something. Either it's a live performance video or a music video. You just have things going out there for visuals, not just for audios alone. So what you're saying is based on the feedback that you were get, getting when you did the sampling or the, the yeah, listening. Because I already released the audio before I shot yes, the video. Yes, yes. You, you felt like this one should be the one that you should People do the video. People were even calling for the video. They were already asking. Oh, wow. That when are we going to have a music video for this, for that, you know, and it was, it was something. And that's another thing. Let people demand for some things before you do it. Mm. At least few people. Mm. So when they demand for it, when you drop it, there will be, the, 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 the ongo would have been there already. So you just soak it in and they just spread it. Okay. And people spread your music, not just you. Yeah. That's yeah. where it is, you yeah. know. So, because we've had in in the song was released in about, I think about three or four weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we've had about on Facebook we've had thousand about twenty something thousand views already on you know, and you have YouTube, you have another platforms too, so it's okay. it's, it's growing.
All right, so I, I understand you went to Nigeria to do to promote the music yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. I was in Nigeria. Can you talk yeah. about some of the events and how some of the platforms that you visited to yeah. promote to promote the music? Yeah, uh, right now the the music video um, it's on about about ten TV stations, both on cable and terrestrial. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in African Magic, about mm -hmm. five stations in African Magic. It's in Aboni Live TV. It's on uh, local stations in Nigeria, STV. AIT, LTV, that's Lagos Television, and a lot of other platforms across Africa, you mm. know, that we had to send it to them. And it's um, on several blogs, you know, for people to download. And still, at the same time, the audio has been promoted on local stations, gotcha. local stations in Nigeria. Gotcha. So I just, I believe in promotion a lot, you know. And right now, I still believe we haven't done more. Mm. We haven't done so much more. You, you haven't still, done enough. We haven't done enough, sorry. And we're still pushing for more, you know, to just make it keep going out there for people to get a feel of what it looks like, you know, and what it sounds like. Now, how did you get, how did you connect? I know that every society is different, yeah. right? Nigeria is a little different. But how did you connect with all the people at those different platforms? Okay, now, I, in, I think I mentioned this in my last interview, that every musical artist, you need people. Mm. You need to be media friendly. Mm. You need to understand the media, both TV, both radio, the bloggers, the, the press men. You need to understand a lot how to relate with them. So those, the, most of these contacts are contacts that are built over the years. And some of them were far outside now. Gotcha. Some people just refer people to you and you just meet them up and that's the way it goes. You know, you just have to, you don't have to be an island on your own. Mm -hmm. You just have to, you know, know you, you need people. people. You need people around you. You got a network. So yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. I love that lot, network. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. You know. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, do you have um, concerts that you're looking at for this in the U.S.? Yeah, de definitely, definitely. This summer? Concerts in view. There, there's going to be a live recording um, concert with a friend. I'm actually going to be hosting. He's going to be there um, sometime in July. Okay. And um, we're looking at another live recording concert later in the year, sometime around December. And there's several other concerts, you know, tours, Boston, Virginia, California, several states. You know, as the dates come, we just keep giving it up, you know. Make people, people aware of them. Yeah. Um, um, I've, I've been asking a lot of people every time I do these interviews, I, I always ask because I'm just curious that what, what, what's, what's the reason behind it. So I want to hear your take on it. Okay. The first one, the first question is, why do you think that in the recent years, okay. the Nigerian gospel music okay. had sort of, I would say, I've been seeing has gone mainstream mm -hmm. in America. Okay. Like a lot of American artists like Donnie McClurkin. Yeah, like, collaborating with our people. Collaborating and even doing like Snatch, they've been yeah, doing a lot yeah, of our songs. Music, so. yeah. Why do you think this has this has become has become popular what I, what in I recent think years? Is What's responsible for hard that? work pays off. On, on the part of our people on the part from of our Nigeria. Yeah. Because the the more you put yourself on the international market, that's how it is, you know, and it, it attracts the the partnership and collaboration from these other artists. Some of our artists didn't even call for these artists to collaborate with them. They gotcha. were the ones that, you know, showed People the sought them out. They sought them out. So they, they, they put a lot of hard work into making their brand celebrated globally. Gotcha. You understand? So from there, and the truth is, the, the global scene and the gospel is, is a very narrow circle. Mm. If you're on the global scene, you're on the global scene. Everybody knows like, when you say narrow circle, explain that. What do you mean? Now, it, it's it's a circle that revolves around greatness and revolves around people that actually know what they're doing. So if you're at the top, as far as you've broken into the global market, hmm. everybody relates with you. Gotcha. Why? Because you've got into that level. Hmm. So that is the way it is. And all of these guys are seen to be big in their countries. So. Hmm. It's like you being an American artist that is big here. Mm. Every artist in another country looks at you big and they look at you as a global artist. Yeah. So if you're big in Africa, you understand, they respect you because of you know, what you've been able to do for yourself. So I think that is what really attracted a lot of our foreign artists here you know, to collaborate more with our people and try to do more stuff with them. So I, I would just say that hard work pays. I'm sure if you ask these American artists the reason why they collaborated with them, they tell you simple. Mm. So hard work pays a lot. I think that's work. You know, uh, we've been able to put um, Nigerian gospel music on the world map. You understand? For yeah. people to be able to look for it and yeah. look forward to it. Yeah. You know. Nice, nice, nice. Um, 
Are you thinking about collaboration? Is Definitely. <laughs> are you open have, to that? Have you? a few artists, you know, that I have in mind and, you know, talks are going on with some of our artists and I believe that it's just a matter of time. We're gonna yes, make, yes, yes, yes. We're going to make it work. Like I always say, just be the best at what you do, Definitely. right? Definitely, you're right. You never know who might come you're calling. Right. You're right, you know, that's true. Just do, that's true. do, like you said, you know, a lot of our people, they've done, they put a lot of hard work into you're that right. stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, it's just so. good to do what you do. I yeah. do that's best. <laughs> well, speaking of hard work, another yeah. question I always like to ask, yeah. particularly musicians, okay. people who play instruments, is okay. what is your take on musicians who get paid for playing in a, in a local church? Okay. So, like I always say, if you play concerts, you're always going to get paid for Definitely. that, though, right? But what about... A church. A local church. You're playing, you're a member of that local church okay. and you look to get paid for it. Some people say the choir members don't get paid, the ushers don't get paid. Why should musicians get paid? What okay. is your take on that? What do you, what, um, do you th what do you think? Do you think it's wrong? Do you think it's I'm right? I'm not going to say it's wrong or right. Okay. But I will say that it depends on the um, individual's perspective. Okay. Because what I'll say is if music is the only thing you do as a person, if you do that for a living. If you do that for a living, I wouldn't say you should demand for it, but there should be a kind of understanding between you and your pastor or the management of the church that, okay, this is what you do full time. Mm -hmm. And you know, for you to do music full time, you have to be professional in what you do. Mm. It's like you saying you're a doctor, mm. like you saying you're a nurse. Yeah. Doctors have certifications, they yeah. are good at what they do. That's yeah. why they get paid yeah. for what they do. Mm -hmm. and they provide solutions. Mm -hmm. So you don't only demand to get paid for what you don't even really know how to do. Mm. So you, you, have to, you have to get to the level, you need to get to that, point that professional where, level where you can you. demand thank to, you. to, 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 to get Most paid. times, you know the funny part of it, if you're so good, sometimes people make offers to you, you don't even have to ask for it. Yeah, they will step to you in, 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 in a different way. Yeah. And I will say that I've, I've been in payrolls of some churches Back in Nigeria, I played for churches I wasn't paid for. It wasn't some offered, some I didn't take the offer. Why? Because I didn't want to give 100% of my commitment okay. because I had other involvements outside the church mm -hmm. with other ministries. You mm -hmm. know, so that's why I decided not to. But some churches came offering, oh, let's give you X amount of money to actually be um, our drummer, our keyboardist, our music director. So I'm not going to say that is wrong you understand but it depends on the perspective of who is collecting and who is giving mm. that's what i said so it, it's it depends on you it's not uh, boy when it not becomes mandatory that you're not going to serve if you're not if being don't, paid yes then i think that is wrong yes yes but if there, there should be an understanding between you both if that's what you do professionally then you need to have some kind of um professional background and proof Mm. For what you want to get paid for. Mm. You understand? A lot of people just say, okay, a lot of people go into the field because of the money, mm. which is wrong. At the end of the day, you go into the field because of the money and you don't get the money at the end of the day. Why? Because some platforms see you're not good enough mm. to be there. So when you demand for money, they just look at you like, you're just learning. So why are you here to come get money? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> A lot of musicians don't even know when they are not professionals. Yeah. You don't decide you're a professional by your own judgment. People mm. tell you. Mm by ratings you understand yeah. so it just i don't know there's a way to balance it but I, I i don't know if i've been able to do justice to it but i just think that that's my own perspective of what it is you yeah. understand but it shouldn't be demanded for there should yeah. be a kind of understanding between both parties yeah so i like I, I, I like what you're saying though yeah. that if you're gonna if you're gonna collect money <laughs> i mean be good enough be, be good enough be we gotta yourself. be I gotta get my money's worth anyway. Let them know that when you're so good, <laughs> yeah. they need to appreciate you. You're yeah. not the one to ask for it. Yeah. Because they know that, okay, you've gone to certifications, you've done trainings, and you're good at what you're doing. Mm. So that's what I see. Mm. You know, mm. so, but I, I, I don't know. It depends on individual's perspective about it. Some people think if they don't get paid, they're not gonna get played for churches. Yeah. I don't know, but it's just a choice. But I don't think it's right to, I will use the word monetize your gift. Mm. Don't monetize it. Explain that. You should be appreciated. Don't make people feel that, okay, I'm paying you, that's why you're doing what you're doing. You understand? Yes. If that's the thing that people have, that's the mindset for the, the corporate world. They pay you, that's why you come to office at 9 to 5. Mm. But when you're appreciated for what you do, 
at the same time, think about the fact that it's a service to God, but you're being appreciated for it because that's what you do professionally. Yes. So it's not like, okay, if I don't get paid, I'm not going to play. Mm. We need to start looking beyond what we get. Mm. We need to look beyond what we get and look at who is rewarding us. Mm. What humans give you is just an appreciation for them showing you that they appreciate you. Mm. Even if a job pays you one million dollars, it doesn't, it can't, it can't give you a reward for your gift. The reward comes from God. Good. That's it. I like that. That's I like it. that. So, I mean... Uh, going along the line of what you're saying, though. Yeah. Sorry, it doesn't mean I don't support people that use other people. Yeah, yeah. I don't support churches that don't, use don't, people. Don't use people. No, I don't support that. If you can afford to appreciate people, appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate them. But don't make them feel... Don't use the word as a service when you actually pay for all the services mm. that are still being done to God. Mm. I'm not going to go into details, but you know what I'm talking about. Yes, definitely. You understand? Definitely. You invite other people to come yes. do stuff. Some and people hide them. on that that... That it's wrong to hide under that. They're saying that is a service, so people shouldn't get paid for it. If you want to gotcha. appreciate, if you can appreciate, appreciate. Yes. If you don't have resources to do it, let them understand you don't have resources to do. It. Mm. But don't make people feel used because it's really expensive. Training these gifts, you have a talent, but it can be raw and not useful. Mm. You can be a drummer, you can't even play a good beat. But for people to put their time and energy into practice, into getting materials, into going for training and courses, these things aren't cheap. It's like you're going to school and you get a job afterwards. Yes. But this is not like a job. It's it's a service to God. At the same time, it's what these guys do professionally. Yes. So I'm just going to say that I don't support people getting used mm -hmm. and I don't support you monetizing your gift. Yes. There should be a balance. Yeah. So that, that's what I feel. And I think it also it also helps if you know how you got into what you're doing right now. Exactly. And I want you to talk about that again because I think that's, that's uh, we, we, we talked about that before. Yeah. How you figured out that God wanted you to go into this, you know, into this ministry. Yeah. And I think if you can go, go talk a little bit okay, about yeah, that. Okay, yeah, I'm just going gonna... to... And it would show that what your vision is. Yeah. Because you, you're not just doing it because you, you like music and you yeah, like definitely. to play. The love for it is, is part of it, mm -hmm. but you're, there's a much bigger purpose yeah. behind it. Talk about that. Okay, now, a um, couple of years ago, I think I mentioned in the last interview I had, um, it was actually an encounter with God, okay. you know, calling me into ministry to actually be a worshiper. And that was in 2005 when I had, uh, had an encounter with God. I was waiting on God what the year 2006 was going to hold for me. Yeah. And God told me that I'm calling you to be a global worship ambassador. And I want to give you songs. I want to give you ideas that will actually help people connect to me more and liberate people mm. through worship. Uh. So that was the vision I got. And God told me, I'm going to give you every backing you need. I'm going to give you every support you need. But the thing is, a lot of people feel because God said it, it's going to come in two months. Mm. <laughs> I'm talking about 12 years down the line. Yes. And some things I plan to achieve, I haven't done everything. But it doesn't mean that I'm giving up on God. I'm not holding on to him for what he's about to do. But God keep, he keeps unfolding himself and keeps... You know how it is when you update an application, you get more features. Mm. That's how God is. He updates you daily. You understand about what he's supposed to do with you. Then you get more things to done, mm. you know, to be done. Mm. So that's how it is. So then God told me that and I had my first concert in 2007. It took me two years afterwards to have mm -hmm. my first concert. You understand? Mm -hmm. And planning and everything. So from that time, that was 10 years ago when I had my first concert till today, we're still doing projects. We're still doing concerts, we're still doing things to give back to the society, we're still shooting videos, we're still having concerts, still doing things here and there. Mm -hmm. Recording more songs, mm -hmm. meeting more people, mm -hmm. building networks. Mm -hmm. You understand? Begin making the connection bigger. Mm -hmm. If you stand for a vision and you say this is what you want to do for life, you need to understand the word for life. It's not five years, it's not ten years. That means levels and stages are going to keep unfolding itself to you every time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I understand. I might not be where I am. I might not be where I want to be, sorry. But I'm not where I was yesterday. Correct. That's where it is. So you need to understand the process of growth in ministry. So, and another thing is, God is my sole provider. It doesn't mean I don't have needs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want, to be, you want to be under pressure to do a lot of things at the same time. But mm -hmm. I got to that point where I had to understand. And God had to force me to understand. At some point, I used to look up to men, too, for everything I needed. But God told me, son, if you're going to grow in life, you need to get out of that point of looking to men. For yourself. But you need to take 
your gaze off man and put it on me so at that point things just doubled up you know so i've been doing stuff since then uh, and service is another thing you need to learn how to serve i've served in several ministries across the world serving served, in, a, in a local ministry i've served in local ministries i've been i've been uh, a choir member i've been a drummer i've been a piano player i've been a music director i've been a, a minister in charge of music i've been head of department i've been you understand i've served in different capacities so you need to understand that if you want to actually be a material for God to be used, you need to pass through the process. Mm. A lot of people don't want to pass through the fire, but they want to come out clean. Mm. You don't get gold in its final state mm. if it wasn't ugly at first and uh, passes through that fire. Yes. So that's what I, I, I have to say that you need to have a vision for where you're going to. I have vision for the next five years. I have a vision for the next 10 years. I have a vision for 20 years to come. I have a vision for the next few months. You need to have short term goals semi goals and long term goals you understand so it's just like a lot of people don't look ahead because they don't even have a future plan for what they're doing mm -hmm. i see myself this is what i do for a living i'm a worshiper i'm a musician it's different from somebody that does it part-time i give my all to it why because i want to i want to invest in something it's like you buying shares or buying a, 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 a part of a company and you're expecting it to grow over the next few years. But you don't expect your dividends immediately. So that's the way it is. We're investing in God and investing in yourself and in your ministry. So things could take time before it unfolds. But we just need to keep holding on to make sure that you get the result that you're looking for. And mm. that future that God has promised you. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. So I haven't said that. What do you think it was next for you? I mean, after this release of this album, I know that you're going to be promoting, you're doing yeah. concerts. We're promoting and we're eating the studio again. Okay. I'm going to start another project very soon. In the next two, three months, we're we'll getting back in the studio. Another CD project or are you dropping singles? We're, we're, or? we're going to do a single, but it's a plan for another album. But we're going to start with a single. Okay. We're going to do another single, then a couple of singles, then we'll record the album possibly at the live recording concert. God permits us, we should be able to get an album out of that. You understand, both a visual and an audio album out of that. But I, I just like to follow God per time. I like to follow God each moment of the way because that's the only way you can grow. It's like you having a boss that tells you what the vision of the company is. That's the same way God is to me. Mm. He's my boss. God is your boss. He tells me what next to do. Yeah. That's the way it is. If not, you just run with that direction. Mm. You understand, and that's terrible running with that direction in life. It's like a company that doesn't have policies, they don't have nothing guiding them, they don't have no vision and focus. You will mess your clients up. And to us, I want to look at it like a company set up. You have a boss, you have you as a manager, and you have clients to deal with. God is the boss. We are the managers, worshippers. Our audience are our clients. Mm. So if you don't get directive from your boss, you wouldn't know what to do and your clients will suffer. So nice. it's like you running without a focus. You understand the people that follow you your followers your fan base have thousands of followers across the globe if you don't know what you're doing they will just feel lost you understand and people some people look forward to hearing the next material from you they look forward to hearing the next song from you why because the last one was able to lift them from that point of hopelessness to where they are right now and they keep hearing that every day but they don't want to keep hearing that for the next couple of years mm. they want to hear materials from you every time and you need to keep digging deeper into god to keep getting those inspirations to get those songs out to keep getting those those revelations for those songs to come so you can keep blessing people but the bible says that the glory of the latter shall be greater than the former so your last project shouldn't be greater than the one you're dropping right now mm. that's where consistency comes to play and there's no consistency without god that's the truth Connectivity with God, right? You have to be, you have to stay connected. There's no consistency without God, and the connection between you and your fans. God should be the middleman because He's the one that gives you the ideas, the songs, to relate with your fans. So God is always in the picture. I, I never like take Him out of the picture. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like That's that. it. So how do you how do you stay fired up with God on Stay glued because the, your connectivity with, with God is important. Very How do you important. ensure that you stay connected to God? Because that's another aspect yeah, right. in music. I've seen over the years with a lot of musicians, there's a lot of things to stray you away. Mm -hmm. 
There's a lot, a lot of, of distractions a lot of, here and there. A lot of distractions. I say a lot, that. A lot of musicians are gifted, but I, I've seen them go up and down spiritually. Yeah. How do you ensure that you're, you're I, staying connected that. and you're not distracted from your vision? Yeah. Because yeah. from what you said, you have a vision. Definitely. So how do you maintain that connectivity together? Now, the people you have around you influence you a lot. Okay. Your company determines where you go to. Mm. Number one, I try to keep the right company. People that fire me up and remind me of the visions I have and where God is taking me to. Secondly, I don't forsake my fellowship time mm. with other people. Mm. I have pastors that I go to meet occasionally. They share what God is telling them and what, what God, because God is new every day. At the same time, people say God is an unchanging God, but his ways are new. So you need to know what God is doing right now to be able to be in tune with it. So I meet with people that actually tell me what is happening right now and to compare with what God is telling me right now. You know, and also I have my, I have my retreats, I have my study time, I have my fellowship time, I have my personal worship time. I tell mm. people, a worship encounter that you don't have in your closet, you can't take it to the public. So there's, there's, no, there's no film trick, there's no nothing about it you can do. What you don't encounter in your closet, you can't take it out. That's what it is. You understand? It's like a, an athlete that doesn't train. If you have to run a marathon... In the Olympics, you should have rehearsed Definitely. and tried that marathon out several times in your training. <laughs> you don't you wait. To, you don't wait till the day of. No, you to, don't wait till the training before you come. You know the day of the marathon to come show your ski or to come learn how to run here. No, you would have done that multiple times That's in right. your training. That's right. That's where it is. So to me, the closet worship or the personal worship is like the rehearsal for the real thing. That's and you're right. training for the real thing as an athlete. So you need to actually encounter God several times in your closet. That's how you take it out there. Yes. yes. So that's how you stay fired up. You, you stay glued in the Word. You stay glued in your personal worship time, your fellowship with brethren. And even the Bible says, do not forsake the, what? the fellowship of the brethren. You need to fellowship together. And a lot of people think that is church. No, it's not church. Fellowship. You can go to church and don't fellowship with other people. You can go to church and not even listen to your pastor. So when you make fellowship, you need to have people that speak to you. You need to have people that speak over your life. I said this in the last interview that I have people praying for me globally, everywhere. Wow. I have friends that are praying for me. Why? Because I've been able to convince them and share the vision of God over my life to them. And they believe in it. So that's how it is. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. That's how it is. Very nice. Yes. Well, I want to thank you today. It's thank been you. another wonderful round. Definitely. Uh, I want to wish you all the best at Revive TV. Keep us posted with all your concerts and Definitely. all the events and feel free to come back and interview Definitely. with us some more. Thank you and God bless. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Brother TV.